All right, let's go through some various examples of how to use if statements in Excel. Let's start off pretty simple. Suppose we want to create a new variable over here called, I don't know, description of a car. And what we want to do is categorize these cars based on the horsepower to see are they a powerful car or not powerful car. So let's suppose that in our opinion, a powerful car would be one with more than 200 horsepower. So we'd want this Acura to be in the not powerful, but this BMW to be in the powerful. So a way we can do that is equals if, so these if statements always start with an equal, that's how Excel knows it's a formula. And then we give it the test. What is it checking for? So what I'm gonna put here is this horsepower here for the Acura is in K2. So I'm just gonna click that and it fills in K2. And if that is greater than 200, then I want it to tell me that it's a powerful car. So in quotes, since this is a word, powerful. And then otherwise, if it's not true that it's greater than 200, I want to call it pitiful. Okay, so if it's greater than 200 horsepower, powerful, otherwise call it pitiful. So then if we want to do this for all the cars, we can just grab this little green fill handle here on the bottom right and we can copy it down to the bottom. And only for those cars that have a horsepower bigger than 200 is it going to call it powerful. So that's a basic idea. Now we can get more interesting results here as well. Suppose we wanted to see if a car was hard to park. And maybe to us, a car is going to be really hard to park if two things are both true. And so let's make a little variable here about parking. And suppose a car is going to be really, really hard to park if say we look at the length here and it's longer than 200 and it's also say wider than 70. That might be a car where it's just going to be too hard for us to find a place to park it. So we can put in an and command here. It starts off with the normal if equals if and now we put in capital A N D and inside parentheses we're going to put the two things that we want it to check separated by a comma. So here we want to see is it both true that the length, so that's here in Q2, is that greater than 200 comma and is it also true that the width here in T2 is greater than 70. And we close those parentheses. So what's in the parentheses here, it's going to check to make sure that both of those things are true. If so, so here we put a comma, it's going to give us the first result we put here. And let's say we're going to say that's hard to park in quotes, since it's a word, comma. Otherwise is the last thing. Okay. Okay, so to read this out, if both of these two things are true, Q2 is bigger than 200 and T2 is bigger than 70. Tell me it's hard to park, comma, otherwise tell me it's okay. So let's hit enter. So this first car is okay. Now let's drag this down. And let's look at the hard to park cars. So the Buick Roadmaster is both longer than 200 and wider than 70. So that's going to be a really hard to park. Same thing with these Cadillacs here, okay? All right, now what if we didn't want to check to see if two things were both true? What if we wanted to check if either or? Maybe we want to buy a small car. So is it small? Now we have a type of car list here, but there are two kinds of cars that might be small. There are ones that are called small and ones that are called compact. So maybe we want a list of cars that are either one of these two types. So let's type equals if what's in I2 here, we want to do an or command. So or open parentheses is what's in here equal to the word small in quotes or is I2 equal to the word compact in quotes, close parentheses. 
So the two things in the red parentheses here, if either one or the other is true, because certainly both of these can't be true at the same time, there's only one word here. So if either one or the other is true, tell me, yes, it's small in quotes. Otherwise, tell me no, it's not a small car. So if it's either small or compact, say yes, it's small. Otherwise, no, it's not. Hit enter. Since we have things here to the left, instead of dragging it down manually, we can use a little trick and we can double click and it'll fill that formula all the way down. But that only works because we already have a formula next to it that has also been filled all the way down. So here, this is small, so yes. Midsize, no. Compact, yes. Cool. Let's do two more things with if statements. Similar to the and command and the or command, there's a not command. Let's suppose that I'm looking for cars for a friend of mine and my friend just happens to hate Chevrolets. So I want a little variable here to tell me, am I allowed to look at that car for my friend or not? So can I buy this for my friend? Anything that's not a Chevrolet is possible. So here we can say if equals if, capital N-O-T, not. And what we're checking for is the make equal to Chevrolet. So we look at G2 here. Is that equal to Chevrolet in quotes? Since it's a word, close the parentheses. So if that's not true, tell me, yes, I can buy it. But if it is true, no, I'm not allowed to look at that because my friend doesn't like Chevrolets. Let's hit enter. So of course these Acuras would be fine, the Buicks, the Cadillacs, but not the Chevrolets. So that's that not function. All right, let me leave you with one last example here. The basic if function that we used over here in column A just looks to see if a number's bigger than 200 or not. And we're calling a car either pitiful or powerful based on the horsepower. What if we wanted to do something a little more nuanced here and we didn't want to just say a car is powerful or pitiful, but we wanted to give several different names for different cars with different amounts of power in the engine. Here we can use the ifs command. So let's just call this description too. And here we can say equals ifs ifs with an s. This tells Excel we're going to have more than one condition that we're checking for. And the way this formula works is you put something to check for and if that's true, if that thing is right, then you tell it what to say. So for example, what if we wanted to say if a car has a horsepower, so here let's look at K2, if that horsepower, if that value is bigger than 250, then tell me that car is really powerful. Vroom. But, okay, then it goes and it checks the next thing, but only if that's false. If it's bigger than 250, it stops there and tells us vroom. So let's suppose if it's not bigger than 250, what if it's greater than 200 though? That's still pretty powerful, so we'll, we'll call that car powerful. Not quite up to our vroom standards comma, and let's see, what if it's not bigger than 250 and it's not bigger than 200, it keeps on going. So what if K2 is bigger than say 150 horsepower, then let's just say it's okay. And then finally, if K2 is less than or equal to 150, call it pitiful in quotes, okay? So if it's bigger than 250, save room. If not, keep going and see if it's bigger than 200, call it powerful. If not, see if it's bigger than 150. If so, call it okay. If not, if it's less than or equal to 150, call it pitiful. Enter. And then again, we can just double click and we can have all that work done for us automatically using ifs with ands or ors or nots, or ifs statements. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Good luck in all your Excel adventures, everybody. Bye-bye now.